home. Surrounded by a rainforest at the end of the road. I spent my formative years running in the sand dunes and playing in the shore break of Clackwood Sound. Surfing was a natural progression and it consumed me from a young age. My competitive nature created an endless hunger for improvement and the drive to reach the highest level fueled a constant need to be in the ocean. Surfing has always been what makes me happiest, but it's also what frustrates, motivates, and pushes me. As I improved, my curiosity to ride new waves grew and led me to places off the beaten path, taking a little more effort to get to than pedaling a bike to the local beaches. But there's no better feeling than scoring these remote spots, just you and your friends. As a surfer, those are the days that you live for. No other place grips me like home. All those hours spent freezing in the winter rain, waiting to catch just one more. I traded a normal upbringing for surfing, and that's what led me here. I'm Noah Cohen, and this is my story. I came into this world straight onto the sea. Home was the Waltzing Matilda, a boat moored at the 4th Street Dock. My parents weren't exactly status quo, neither were driven by money or job security. I think that's how they ended up here. I also have a twin brother. We were such little dock rats, running around causing trouble while dad's back was turned. We were a wild little team. Our dad passed away when we were 10 years old. He was a man who squeezed a lot of life into his ears. A stubborn guy who always stood behind what he believed in. During a divided time between loggers and environmental activists, he often joined in protest to protect the old growth forest. Even laying down in front of logging trucks. Without my dad around, I found mentors and some of my older surf peers. Guys like Pete. I've drawn a lot of influence from him, and I look up to him, both as a surfer and as a person. It's hard to imagine where I'd be right now without surfing in my life. Oh, that's Dean. Swooping. With the World Surf Games coming up and a hurricane swell hitting the East Coast, we decided to head over and get some time in the water before France. Although still at home in Canada, Nova Scotia feels like a world away. Uh-oh, uh-oh, found the spot. Found the spot. Okay. I've been coming since I was a teenager, and Nico always plays a great host. Not many places have such a relaxing vibe and a seemingly endless supply of point breaks.
confidence is a huge part of competing. So to spend time out here with Nico and his family, surfing all day in such fun waves, it really helped me to leave for the games in a good state of mind. As a teenager, the World Surfing Games at Huntington Beach was my first major contest. It went well for me then, and I'm super stoked to be back at the same event so many years later. Especially with it being a future Olympic qualifier. The energy at the parade was amazing, with over 40 countries all representing in their own colorful and unique ways. And it seemed like all of Biarritz was there too, cheering us on. Nobody really knows who will go to the games in 2020, but you could feel the anticipation buzzing throughout the crowd. Grand Plage is right there in the middle of it all, and it's such a sick place to hold an event like this. I was super fortunate to have Shannon around to help manage the emotions before my first heat. You know, like that first three to five minutes, don't worry about what's happening on the beach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just focus on you. After winning against a local favorite, I felt like I found a lot of confidence. In round two, the waves kind of shrunk, but with Goody's priority, I managed to get another heat win. Yes, buddy. Putting on a clinic. How nice does it feel to make plans and execute? But I'm happy to see you do that. With the big tides and trailing midway through my third heat, Shannon signaled for me to leave the pack and go and try a new zone. Dragging him deep. It paid off. I got two scoring waves in the dying moments and managed to make my heat. Standing with my teammates as they announced the score that I needed was an indescribable feeling of relief. We decided I should try the same peak in the next round. But after a delay from the tower, I sat through a long lull while other competitors got scores on the board. I finished with a strong one, and initially I thought I'd done enough. Good effort, man. But it ended up being just shy of what I needed. I took a lot of positives from that top 20 finish. I feel like I know what I want to do, what, do I, what I want to accomplish. It made me feel like I belonged in the field, and it fired me up for the next event. But for now, we decided to do a bit of touristing and chase down a few waves.
Back in Canada, summers are all about fun ways and good times with friends. The south swells show up and the winds stay light. A recipe for a good day on the boat. I've known Rykam forever, literally. Born on the same day and in the same little town. He's like my other twin brother. It can be tough to get Pete out to this spot, but with a little bit of positivity, he usually comes around. Always found the spud gun. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> hey, wait, no boom. Two years ago, we were in Iceland filming for Seawolf, and I blew my knee trying to doggy door a closeout barrel. It was by far the most serious injury I've ever had. After the MRI results, I remember just sitting on the couch and crying for like an hour. So much doubt, wondering if your body will ever feel the same. Doubt that you'll still have a career, doing what you love. I made it my mission to recover stronger and faster than anyone before me. It turned into a game almost, an obsession. <laughs> Having surfing taken away from me was kind of like this reset button. It showed me how much I loved it and needed it, and it renewed my desire for it. My surgeon told me that I'd be lucky to be surfing nine months post-op. Six months later, I was paddling out to ride my first wave. contests when we were younger, so getting photos and filming parts was our avenue. In the Shooting with guys like Jeremy Koreski was what really made it happen for us. 
and as his profile grew, so did ours. This is the premier spot in our area, and I owe a lot to the boys for bringing me along. Nobody surfs this wave like Pete does. He's always setting the pace out there. The rest of us just do our best to follow his lead. My girl, my girl. You can't hide from me. Tell me where did you sleep at night? In the It's crazy to look back to the days with the water housing, filming each other and freezing our asses off. Peter's made a real name for himself in the surf world, and I'm honored and humbled to follow in his footsteps. Puna Rocas, an unfinished place built on mountains of sand and dust. It had this desolate, eerie feeling. I never quite got comfortable. I arrived late and didn't really feel like I settled in. With the Pan Ams being one of two pathways to the games, a strong showing here for Canada would seat us well for next year's qualifying event. Things weren't really clicking in warm-ups and I didn't feel confident with the wave or with my equipment. Bigger open face waves, especially softer ones like this, are a bit of a weak point for me. We had a younger team and I felt like I took on a bit of a leadership role. And it made me really proud to see the new generation surfing and carrying themselves so well. Being the only English speaking team at the event, I think that united us as a group. Regardless of competition, opening ceremonies are always a great time and a good way to soak in the experience. Right now the tide's pretty high, it's looking a little slow, it's looking a little soft. So you're going to have to work really hard to generate your speed. So this is where we want to really work on getting good clean throws off the takeoff and then staying high and going fast. Nice. The opening heat had me feeling a bit off my game. I didn't really surf my best, but thankfully made it through the first round. Might have been able to get a little more out of that second turn. It was kind of lower, kind of like what we've been talking about. Yeah, I know. It's... Getting maximum height on your turns. Okay, let's go now. It's a medium one, so you have to go big. Things connected a bit more in the second heat, but I was still left needing a score in the dying seconds. Right, so he needs more to get over black. A wave finally came my way at the end of the heat, but it kind of faded out, and I missed the score by a tenth of a point. That's got to go close. A five? That's probably his best wave. Michael was surfing on point, and it was great to see him make a few heats. But the real star for us was Matea, earning the first Canadian medals at any international contest. 
to watch around the podium while our national anthem was played is a feeling that our entire team is going to cherish forever. Although I had a subpar showing, the team's fourth place finish was a great accomplishment, and we still left on a high note. And it was just in time, too. Pete's been scoring back home, and there's a massive swell coming. When I got back, Peter was already eyeing up the forecast and trying to make a plan. It isn't very often you see the color black on the swell models, so we knew we were in for something exciting. The brunt of the storm smashing straight into Vancouver Island, we decided to leave town and look for something that was a little more sheltered from the strong winds. After being in a contest for a week and the lackluster result, it was great to be out chasing swell with the boys again. picked up yet, so we went to a more exposed spot and found a few fun ways. to make moves and check a new way. We arrived to an incoming tide and increasing swell, but it was still kind of on the smaller side. It gave us a chance to lay into a few turns, but also the odd sneak too. Sudden, like a switch was flipped, the swell showed up. It was pretty raw and chunky, so when Pete wiped out, it kind of spurred a little time on the beach to assess our plan. We stuck with dodging closeout sets and trying to find the odd jet.
There's no telling if we'll see a Canadian in the 2020 Olympics, but one thing is for sure. After all the training, all the travel, and all the competitions, after all that, this is what we truly live for. Isn't that cool? Yo, Shan. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs>